Okay, in this video, we're continuing our discussion of AUC Section 315 for understanding the entity and um, assessing risk of material misstatement. Uh, for the past couple of videos, we've been going through the section, um, AUC Section 315.12, which is understanding the entity and its environment. And so we've discussed gaining an understanding of the industry and its regulatory environment, um, nature of the industry or the entity, and also its selection and application of accounting policies. Uh, so th for this particular video, we'll take a look at their entities, objectives, and strategies, and those related to business risks that may result in risk of material misstatement. Uh, so for some more information about this, we can go down to the explanatory material and sections A36 through 42. So let's go there now. Okay, so now we're down in um, section A36, where we can learn a little bit more about how to gain an understanding of their objectives and strategies and uh, how that relates to our risk assessment. So, so first we see that the entity operates in a certain industry or regulatory environment, et cetera. And so there, it ha itself has a lot of um, risk and objectives that it wants to achieve as it's doing business. And these certainly change over time. Um, so it's good for us to have this conversation with the client every year because they ha may have different um, strategies and different objectives. So they want to increase um, their sales. They may have particular objectives and strategies for doing that. And those strategies could change to achieve that objective. And uh, perhaps they switch gears and want to um, uh, concentrate on more conserving their expenses. Um, so they would have different objectives and strategies for that. So we might have this conversation with the uh, with management as we're planning the audit. And so in conjunction with the organization's um, uh, strategies and objectives and such those come with uh, business risks um, as you're operating a business you have a lot of different risk uh, for things that could go wrong when you are trying to achieve your the objectives that you want so we need to understand what those business risks are um, because those may, might pre become financial statement risk as well so um, some examples of business risks that might arise would be um, in the de development of new products or services um, because those could fail um, also a market that uh, is inadequate to support a product or service so we might could produce an awesome product but there might not be enough uh, demand for it whenever uh, we put it out into the market so that um, could affect a, a number of things including revenue or the obsolescence of the inventory that we've built or even um, you know intangibles that we built related to developing this product that are now kind of worthless another risk might be flaws in the product or services that might result in liabilities or reputational risk so if we're a pharmaceutical company and we produce a product that uh, has serious flaws uh, we could have significant legal uh, liabilities uh, possibly for negligence or something like that and um, then perhaps in the future um, potential customers may not trust our products anymore and we would have big reputational risk. And so um, the better we understand the organization and um, its business risk, the more likely we will um, encounter risk of material misstatement. That's because these business risks eventually become financial risk and uh, have financial consequences. So um, we're obviously not required to understand or uncover every business risk of the entity, uh, but we should make a, a, an effort to um, determine the ones that are significant and that may could possibly cause a material misstatement. So a few things that we might consider when we're obtaining an understanding of their objective strategies and business risk um, include the following things. So we might look at industry developments. Um, for example, if the industry is changing uh, really rapidly and we don't have the personnel to deal with those changes, we might be at a, a big risk of um, not providing a good product. New products or services, uh, we might have a, if we're, we've built a new product that we don't yet um, know how it affects our customer or, um, or the market, we might have um, big product liabilities like defects in the products if we don't yet know how to manufacture it perfectly and that sort of thing. Uh, also, expansion of the business. Um, as we try to expand the business, there are certainly more risks involved that uh, we may not have estimated the demand accurately or um, how much it might cost, and um, or we might need more financing than um, what was originally anticipated. So a lot of risk related to trying to expand the business, certainly. New accounting requirements. If we don't, uh, if the client doesn't stay on top of um, new accounting requirements, then there's a, certainly a risk that they do not um, account for certain transactions accurately or that they do not um, uh, disclose um, all the disclosures that they're required to. Regulatory requirements. As uh, regulations change, uh, there's a risk that they might not follow the regulations um, accurately and could be presented to big, with big lawsuits. And certainly um, financing requirements, the use of IT and um, the effects of implementing the strategy. Um, for instance, if they're not uh, implementing all of these things correctly, um, they might be presented to uh, various risks. So we need to understand all of those potential business risks that might present a material misstatement. So after we gain an understanding of what the business risks are, we need to try to link them to um, the areas where misstatements might be born. And they give a few examples here. So they say that uh, if uh, we have a business risk of contracting customer base, so we're steadily losing company, customers, then we have a, a, a risk of the valuation of receivables. So um, as we're losing uh, customers, our receivables might uh, not be fully collectible anymore. And the same thing can happen in a contracting economy, and even to the extreme case where there might be substantial doubt that the business will even continue to, um, to operate as a going concern. Certainly for us, they've provided sort of a, a list of conditions and events that may indicate risk of material misstatement. So they provided us a list of business risks um, at Appendix C, and we can go down there and kind of skim through that um, briefly. But this Appendix C would provide us a good checklist 
um, in our audit to just basically go down this checklist and see is this present, is this present, is this present, and that would give us an idea of uh, risk of material misstatement that are related to the business risk. And we will see later on that uh, management um, often provides its own um, list of business risk, and we'll see that at, at AUC section 315.16, um, but we can possibly use management's own assessment of business risk um, in our audit plan. But let's go down to Appendix C and see, and kind of skim through and see what types of business risks that they have provided here in this auditing um, standards that will help us develop risk and material misstatement. Okay, so now we're down in Appendix C, uh, conditions and events that may indicate risk and material misstatement. Uh, we see here that uh, this isn't necessarily a complete list of um, conditions that might be risk and material misstatement, but um, it gives us a pretty good start of things to look for. Um, certainly operations and regions that are unstable, new locations, um, joint ventures are certainly risky, changes in the IT environment, um, non-routine, non-systematic transactions where they have to do a lot of um, estimating, new accounting pronouncements, pending litigation, and other related liabilities. So a long list of stuff here that you can possibly go through here in your spare time. Uh, but this certainly gives us a good start on um, way things to brainstorm about.